Hello and welcome to Learn R in 15 minutes video. Spoiler alert, it might take two or three minutes more. <laughs> okay, so what is R? R is a programming language that is open source and it's solely meant for statistical computing and graphics. And therefore, it's no surprise it's mostly used by statisticians and data scientists because that's who it was made for. Now, when you're working in R, you're mostly working in R Studio, which we will be. And you can download R Studio. It's a free environment for our scripting, and you can download it at www.rstudio.com. And now let's see how R Studio looks. So it, basically, it has four panes. It has the source pane, and that's where you will be mainly working. Then it has the console pane. It has the environment and history pane where you can look at your variables and older commands that you've written and then it has the files plots packages and help pane for basically viewing plots and help and exploring files or packages so now let's try and just look at some basic arithmetics in R. So we have our x and y variables, x equals 10, y equals 2. And now let's do addition, subtraction, multiplication, let's do division, let's do x to y power, and then also remainder from division. So let's try that out. So x, oh, that's not going to work. Okay, so 10 plus 2, right? That equals 12. 10 minus 2, shockingly, equals 8. 10 times 2 is 20, and 10 to the second power is 100. So this is more or less, you know, basic stuff. Now let's do some relational operators. So greater than less than first we still have x and y right we know what those are but let's just do numbers instead so let's just do is 10 greater than 2 and that is true now is 10 greater than or less than sorry or equal to 2 that's false and so on but now let's look at some math functions of course R was built for this, so it has an abundance of, of math function. We're going to look at log, we're going to look at apps, we're going to look at square root. So let's just do log of 100 with the base of 10. Right? So 10 and that equals 2. Let's do absolute of minus 5 and that equals 5 and then let's do square root of 9 and that is 3. Right? So basic math functions are all covered. And now let's see help on function. Now this is very interesting, right? Sometimes you need help. So what you do is you write help and then just feed it which function you would like to see help on. And on the right you can see that the help pops up and you can see how the function law actually works, right? So law, you have a number and you give it a base and it returns, of course, the power that is needed for that base to achieve that number. Right? So help, always available and always, always good to have that. Very, very useful. Okay, now let's go through some data sets and basic commands. Now, a basic data set that you have is Iris. This is a very famous data set. It, it, R actually comes equipped with this, right? So it's information on the Iris plant, right? specific measurements for four features measured and three variants of the Iris flower. Okay, so now we got objects to work with and 
first thing, let's look at what object Iris dataset is. So you use the class command and you see this is a data frame. Now data frame is basically a table. That's what you call a table in R. Now let's look at some specifics for this data frame. Let's look at the dimensions of the Iris data frame. And you can see it has 150 rows and five columns. Now let's look at the names of those columns. And the command is actually names of the Iris data frame. And what's it going to return? It's going to return the names of the five columns. Right. And now let's look at the head command. Now the head command is very useful when you don't want the entire data set being written out. It just returns the first six rows of your data, not including the header, but you can also specify how many rows you want to return. So you say head 10 and you get first 10 rows. Uh, you can also use the up arrow key or the down arrow key. Up arrow will take you up the last commands that you've used and then you can use the down key to go back down to the last used commands. Okay, now to do the exact opposite of the head, you're never going to guess it is the tail function. Now the tail of Iris returns the last six rows of that data frame, you can specify again how many rows you want and that gets returned. But now let's talk about statistics because that's what R is made for. So descriptive statistics or the main things like min, max, range, median, mode, standard deviation, and quantile, you can get all that with a single function and that is called a summary function. So if you do summary of iris, you get something so brilliant because you get all of those for each and every column. Isn't that brilliant? Okay, but now let's look at some specific things. Now, sometimes you want to specify a single column, right? So how would you do that? Well, what you would say is you would say you would still call out the data frame, right? So you would say iris, but then you would use the dollar sign and that gives you a list of your columns and you just specify which one you want. So if I say, let's just use the first one, here's what that column values are. But now we can do different stuff with that, right? We can now do the min of that column. So the minimum value is 4.3. Now let's do the max. So the max of the first column is 7.9. But now let's do the range function. Now this one is kind of brilliant because you feed it the column again and what it returns is the min and the max on so the entire range, right? Now let's do the mean. So the mean of the column is 5.8. And now let's check out what type of a column that is. So mode of that column will return numeric. So that is a numeric column. Now let's do standard deviation. So basic statistics, standard deviation of the first column, 0 0.8. And let's do quantile of that column. And we get there it is, right? Okay, so that was descriptive statistics. But now let's talk about plots. So, you know, we're visual beings, so we kind of always want to see it plotted in a way. And R can plot data on its own, but basically the best library to use and the most widely used library is ggplot2. Right? With ggplot2, you can create beautiful print quality and publication ready data visualizations. Right? And let's just look at that library or let's look at what the basic um, idea of the ggplot is. So it's based on a grammar or graphics idea. And what it basically means that each part of the code stands for a component or a layer. Right? So if you look at the, the squared uh, formula up there, right? 
what that is saying is that is basically uh, created by two parts. The first is the ggplot part, and that means what is my data and which columns from that data should take uh, their place on the x and the y axis, right? So that's what ggplot does. And then you add your layers. So that's what the plus sign is there for. And basically that plots the data in the desired geometry. So the geom name just says what kind of geometry should this be? For example, point, line, histogram, box plot. Right? Those would be your different geometries or basically you would call them chart types. If we were if we were discussing this in Excel, right? Those would be your chart types. But here they're uh, they're basically uh, a layers, right? And called geometry, right? And that is your geom name, right? So which geometry should this be? Um, and now let's just let's head back to our studio and let's look at the first geom <laughs> geometry and let's look at a point plot, okay? So what we're gonna write is a we're gonna need a library. We're gonna need the ggplot2 library. Right? And now let's do a basic ggplot, right? What's our data? Our data is gonna be the iris data frame. And what are gonna be, so what are we gonna plot on the x and the y axis? So the x axis should be the length, right? So let's use the length on the x axis and then the y axis should be the width right so we plot these two but now what are our geom uh, geom name is going to be geom point right so this should be a point plot and there it is right so the plots are shown in the fourth quadrant and you can see that we have the X and Y axis that are defined within our plot, right? So it's using the iris data set. The length is on the X axis, the width is on the Y axis, and that is the point plot. But this plot has no color. It's black and white. So now let's add some color to the mix, but first, Let's go back and check out the first 10 rows of our data set. Uh, just to show you by which column we're gonna be plotting to see the name of that column. So we do head of the iris and let's do 10. And we can see that we're interested in the species. So that will be our grouping, right? So grouping gives you, will give us color, right? So the species, we're gonna use, and now let's just do up arrow, up arrow. So let's get to the command that we were using before, because it's basically gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna add a color command, and, and color will be defined by the species column. And right? so all three species should be each their own color. You can also see the legend now on the right in the plot, and you can see that we're using three different colors. Okay, now that we have this, let's talk about a histogram. A histogram is a very, very important statistical chart. And basically, again, it will be the same thing. So ggplot, we're gonna use the iris. We're gonna do the X, right? This one doesn't have the Y. And so the X is gonna be the length, and then we need to do the geome, and the geome in this case, so plus geome is histogram. And we're gonna get a basic histogram as we're used to getting. And again, we're use, you're just gonna, you know, we're gonna want the same thing as before, so add some color to the mix, and we do it in the same way 
we did before. So by defining the color, right? But it's, the result might surprise you. You will see that it's not exactly a color. It's just kind of this border color. So if we want the color to really fill this um, histogram, we have to define a fill, right? So, oh, that was wrong. So let's do fill. So fill, there you go, right? Now it filled the, the plot, the histogram. Uh, it's different than a point plot because point plot has no insight, right? But this one does, so you need to do the fill. Okay, now let's do a box plot. So a box plot, again, a very famous one. And it, it's one of those that gives you the most out of, uh, out of your data, right? The most at once. So it shows you basically the most about uh, your data. So we're going to do iris, we're going to do uh, species, and we're going to do the length. And for our geome, we're going to use geome underscore box plot. So let's look at that one. Let's see what that gives us. Let's make this plot a little bigger. And now you can see for each of the three species, basically all statistics are right there in that plot. And that's just Brilliant. Okay, now let's talk about how we can save these charts. So how can we get these charts out of our studio to use in our blog posts or anything? You're going to see that over here we have the export button and you can save as image or you can save as PDF. So those are built in. But then you can go even further than that. There's a command you can use which is gg save. And what you will need to give it, it's a file name and a path. So a file name, whichever you, whatever you want, right? So you give it a sensible name and then you give it a path. If the path is omitted, it's just going to default to the current working directory. Right? And there it is. It saved the image. Okay, so this was our basics in 15 minutes. We went two minutes over. Who could have ever seen that coming? <laughs> um, but I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you got the idea of how to do basic stuff in our studio and keep watching because the next video we're going to do is going to just go deeper into the ggplot2 and then we're just going to keep these videos coming. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.